Hello, welcome to our unit review on matrices. This is Mr. Bean. I'm going to go through a brief review of some of the topics we've covered while learning about matrices. Don't forget that on the test as well, you will need to be able to work through the algebra skills that were at the end of each of those packets, so make sure that you've looked at those. I'm not reviewing those here, but you can go back and look at any of the application walkthroughs uh, at the very end if you need to have a refresher on that. Okay, I will have up here in the corner, I will say what unit it was that we were on, what lesson, so that way you can skip forward to the, maybe the lessons that you were confused on, or you can just kind of watch through this. This is not necessarily the, the review packet, these are different problems that I've taken from your notes just to try and review with. So the first off was remembering dimensions. So if you didn't remember how to do dimensions, we had to remember that the rows are going this direction. These are the rows, and then up and down, these here would be the columns. Uh, C-O-L. So we have three columns, we have two rows, and so we always put rows first, it would be a two by three matrix. Rows are always first, and then the columns go second. Then we have here, when we say one comma four, this is talking about an actual element. So if this is matrix A here, and we're talking about element inside the matrix that's one comma four, that means row one, and column four. So we go row one, which is here, and then we go column four, which is here, and where does that match up? It's this element right there. So we say the number one. Then for this problem, we're saying row two. Rows are always first, columns are second. So we're talking about row two, which is this one, and then column three, which is this one. So where does that match up? Right there, negative six. Here's just a simple operation. We're subtracting, but we also have a scalar in front here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this two and distribute it. And then what you have is the matrix 10, three, negative four. And now we're subtracting the matrix eight, negative 10, and negative six. Now when I took this two and distributed it, it was only the two that I distributed. If I want to distribute the negative with it, that's fine, you can, then all of these signs would have been the opposites, and this would have been a plus since the negative would have been distributed. So that's up to you how you want to do that. Uh, all right, and then what do we have here? We've got uh, 10 minus an eight, so our answer will be two, and then you have three minus negative 10, so that means three plus 10, 13, and then a negative four minus a negative so here this minus and this negative means plus. So negative four plus six is two. So there is our matrix. Here we're going to, we're still doing the same thing, but we're going to solve for the unknown elements inside these things. And remember on the test that this is, uh, a lot of students automatically think multiplication because you practice that so much. This says addition, so please pay attention to whatever the symbol is there. So, and then also don't forget the scalar that it has to distribute through to every single element. Uh, all right, so really what we have then is uh, we have this becomes eight, negative six, negative 10, and two y. That's what this first matrix is, plus this other stuff. So let's solve for x. If I wanna take this first element, which is in row one, column one, that means I also need to take row one, column one, and row one, column one, match those up. So you have eight plus x equals 15, and then solve for x, x equals seven. Okay, so there's my x, and now how do we get the, the y? You take this element here, let me switch colors here. So we're going to take two y, that's the row two, column two, match it up with row two, column two, and row two, column two. So we have two y plus a negative six equals, negative four. All right, so this really means two y minus six equals negative four. Add six to both sides, 10, and so y equals five. There's my two answers, x equals seven and y equals five. All right, now we're into multiplying. So if we have this matrix A and we're multiplying matrix B to it, then we're going to get what we'll call matrix C. 
So we have these are the what we have here is listed the dimensions. So if the dimensions of A is a one by two, and the dimensions of B is a two by seven. Remember that when you want to know if they are able to multiply, you have to check the middle numbers here. And so if those middle numbers are the same, then it's okay to multiply, and your answer will be the row of the first one and the column of the second. So C's dimensions is going to be a one by seven. One row, seven columns. So here when we multiply this, we're going to start off by figuring out what are the dimensions. So, and so we have, this is a one by two. This one's a two by two. And so then therefore that would equal, the, it's okay to multiply them because those are the same. So it's the outside numbers. So the answer will be a one by two matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little bit of the shape of this thing and then put in here one comma one and one comma two. So I have two elements, one row and two columns gives me just two elements. So let's figure out what these are. What is one one? It's going to be this first row, well there's only one row, one row first column here. So we take negative five from the first row, match it up with the first number in the first column, which is a two. Plus, now we move on to the second element of the first row. So we have a four times, and now we're doing this column here. So we take, this, we just used the first number before, and now we move on to the second number, which is also a two. Uh, and then what does that equal here? So this is going to equal negative 10 plus eight, and that equals negative two. So that's what element C11 is. All right, now let's do C12. Oops, comma. All right, so row one, column one, negative five again. There's only one row, so that makes that easy. But now we're doing L, uh, column two. So instead of doing this column, we now move over to column two. We take the very first element, which is a five, and that's what's being multiplied plus, now we move to the second element. So the second element of this row is a four. We do a four. And then here's our column. Second element of that column is a negative six. All right, now multiply this out. Negative 25 minus 24, positive and a negative. And then that is negative 49. And so our element would be negative two, negative 49, and that is the answer. Now notice on this problem we are multiplying. There's no symbol in between there, so that means we are multiplying. And that now we're going to be looking for the individual elements here. We ha we're missing some variables, x and y. And so to do this, how about we take a row here and match it up with the column that contains our variable that we don't know. So to do that, row one and column one is going to come over here and in our answer will equal the number nine. So we take the first element of that row here and match it up with the first element of the column, which is going to be y, plus now we take the second element of the row, negative two, and the second element of the column, which is negative four. And then that will equal our answer, which we said was nine. Now we have y plus negative two times negative four is positive eight equals nine, so y equals one. All right, now we'll do the same thing with the x val uh, variable. So this time we're taking this entire row that contains the x. We can't take a column because this is the first matrix, and in the first matrix we always take the rows. It's the second matrix where we take the columns. Okay, so we are, we're forced to take a row on this one, and then we need to match it up with any of these columns. We could we could take this column because that y is equal to one, but I'm going to go ahead and take uh, I'm going to take this one because there's a zero there, and I think things will cancel out a little faster. So that row two and that column two. Row two, column two will give us a negative 20. So that's what it's going to equal. So negative five is the first element in this row. And we match it up with the first element of that column, which is a zero, plus, and now we take the second element here and the second element there. So we have an x and a negative five. That's a bit sloppy, sorry. And that's going to equal our answer of negative 20. All right, we clean this up we get negative five x 
equals negative 20, and x equals 4. So there's our answer there. There's where our y equals 1, and there we go. That's how you solve for elements. Just remember, on the you'll see it on the review as well as the test. Be careful about determining if this is multiplication or if it's addition. Students get those confused on how to solve them. Okay, we are going to now find the inverse. Now, as a reminder, how you find the inverse by hand uh, with a 2 by 2 matrix, if our matrix, we'll call this A, B, C, and D. If that's what our matrix is, A, B, C, and D, then the inverse is, you're going to have some little fraction here in front. It's 1 over. Then you have A times D minus B times C. So A, D minus B, C. And then that little fraction gets distributed to, okay, now you remember this? This is where you have these two values trade places. So this one becomes the D, and this one becomes the A. And then this B and the C, they stay where they are, but they become opposite signs. And so the B, if it was positive, it becomes negative. If it was negative, it becomes a positive. The C stays there, and now it's negative. Okay, so that's the formula for finding the inverse. So let's find the inverse here. We have 1 over, here's my A and my D, so we're going to do 0 and negative 12 minus, and then you take the B and the C, so negative 2 and negative 3, and then we're going to multiply that by, all right, these two trade places right here. So this is now negative 12, and this one's the 0. These two, they stay in the same spot, but then the, uh, the signs change, so it would become a negative. Well, since it's already negative, now it's positive. This negative 3 becomes positive 3. All right, let's clean up this fraction here. So we have, this is going to be a negative 12. I'm just going to do this small here. We have a negative 12 minus 6. So this fraction becomes 1 over negative 18. So now we distribute this, which really just means that every one of these things is getting divided by 18. And so our answer is going to be, so think about this, it's going to be, it's a negative fraction, so negative negative is positive. 12 eighteenths is going to reduce, so it's like all of these are over 18, over 18, over 18. Uh, let's see, that reduces to, 6 goes into both, so 2 thirds. Here we have a 2 over 18, but it's negative. Negative 2 over 18 reduces to 1 ninth. Here you have a 3 over 18, of course it's negative, so negative 3 over 18, and that reduces to 1 sixth. And then here you have a 0 over negative 18, which is just 0. So this is the inverse, and you could of course check that on a calculator as well, but you got to make sure that you show your work and how you're setting this up. Now we get to use a calculator to solve this one. So whenever you're solving for a matrix equation, you are looking specifically at the variable, and that's what you're trying to solve for. So how do we get rid of this thing right here? If we're trying to get rid of that matrix, we're going to take the inverse of it to both sides. Okay, so this is kind of like our matrix A, and we're going to do the A inverse in front on both sides. So A the negative 1 in the front on both. So really what this is, is this is what you would type in the calculator. You get negative 4, negative 3, 2, negative 1, and then inverse, and then 7, negative 3, 9, negative 1, and that will equal, so that's what the left side of this equal sign is, that will equal z, because if I multiply by the inverse of this, these things cancel each other out. So that's why this is now gone. Okay, uh, so uh, sorry about my negatives here. This is what you want to type in a calculator, and that's going to give us our answer. Now we're going to solve a system using matrices, but before we can do that, we want to put it all in standard form, so kind of like alphabetical order. So I will rewrite this system so that it's 4x minus 2z equals 20, so nothing changed in this first one. But on this one, now we need to bring this 7y over. And so there is no x variable. We'll now have a negative 7y uh, plus z equals 
negative 9. The, neg the minus 9 here stayed there on the right. And then we get to this last problem here. This 5y needs to come over, and the 8z needs to come over to the other side of the equal sign. So we'll have the x, that nothing changed there. But now we have minus 5y minus 8z equals, and then the 15 stayed right where it was. All right, now the reason we do this is so that you can set up your coefficient matrix, your variable matrix, and your constant matrix. So the variables for the, the x's are a 4, uh, and then the y on the first equation is a 0. There's no y value here, so there's nothing. And then negative 2 is the z. And then let's go to the next equation. So there's no x, so we put a 0. Negative 7 is the y variable, and a 1 is the coefficient of the z. Coefficient of the x is a 1. Coefficient of the y is negative 5. And the coefficient of the z is negative 8. And then we do x, y, z equals our constants. And our constants were 20, negative 9, and 15. So the common mistakes on this stuff is that students don't get these in order first. They might take this this one right here and just say that it's a 1, a 5, and an 8. And that would, of course, give you the wrong answer because they need to be in this standard form. Just try to make it alphabetical and then keep your variables here alphabetical. Now the last step for this is, is just like this previous problem on the, uh, on the, that I was going through, and that is multiply both sides by the inverse of this matrix here. So you take this matrix, put it in a calculator, do its inverse in, on both sides. So x, y, z is going to be this inverse times the constant matrix, and you're done. Whatever that gives you is your x, y, and z. All right, now we're into the encoding and decoding part. So uh, remember this, this one was uh, an example from the notes. Just wanted to remind you, I'm not going to go through this whole example here, but I wanted to at least remind you how you do this. And that is, you have to first figure out what these numbers are. So A is a 1, L is a 12, the G is a 7, this E here is a 5, and I'll just stop there. We can keep going. Remember that space would count as a 0 for all of these spaces. Uh, and then you just keep going out. And if there's an odd number, you have to add a 0 at the end because you have to have an even number of uh, numbers. And so now the way we do this is you take two numbers at a time. So we're going to take the number 1 and the number 12. And then we multiply it by this special encoding matrix. And this, of course, is where you can use a graphing calculator where you speed this up. Negative 5, 4. All right, so we just multiply that out, and that's going to give us our two new numbers that are encoded. And then you take, after that, you take the 7 and the 5. And remember, on the calculator, you can just hit second enter, and it will pull up our, your previous thing here. And then 3, negative 2, negative 5, and 4. And then that will give you two new numbers. That's how you encode your, uh, your messages. Now, decoding is a little bit different, but very similar. Uh, they are, you, you still start off with these numbers here, 1, 11, but you just take two at a time, these numbers. And now we're going to decode them by taking this matrix that was used to encode them, negative 1, 5, 3, and 1. So you take the matrix that was used to encode them, but you use its inverse instead. That's the big thing here. So you take these and then undo this message by uh, taking the inverse. So when you multiply these out, you'll get some new numbers, and you have to take those numbers and correspond it to the alphabet. So for example, A, let me pull this up here. This was from your notes. So if you can see here, the, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So you have A was a 1, space was a 0, and so forth. So you just take whatever numbers you get from your answer here, and you convert it into the letters. And that's it. So good luck on your assessment. I hope things go well for you on the test. You can get through this in one shot. And uh, I will see you again probably not until next semester in my lessons. All right, good luck.